I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll discuss how to graph equations, polar equations by plotting points. The question here is graph the equation r equals to 1 plus cos theta. Now to graph the equation we need some points for theta and the corresponding points for r, right? So here r is a function of theta. I could always write this equation as f of theta equals to 1 plus cos theta, right? It is good to write it in function form since uh, we can do many operations and explain them better to write it in function form. Uh, to start with, what theta point should I take to find the points so that we could connect those points and sketch a graph? Well, we should look into symmetry, right? If I have some kind of symmetry, we can restrict the points. Cos is an even function, right? So that gives you an idea that probably f of minus theta could be equal to f of theta. And in that case, we will have a symmetry which will be on the polar axis, right? So, so that is a kind of symmetry which we can have. So let's try it out. So what is f of uh, minus theta in this particular case? We'll replace uh, cos theta minus theta, right? So f of minus theta will be equals to 1 plus cos of, replacing theta with minus theta. We know cos of minus theta is cos theta, so it could be written as 1 plus cos theta, and that is what f of theta is, right? So, so we have f of minus theta equals to f of theta. So it really means that this particular function is symmetric about the polar axis. So this means it is symmetric about polar axis. Is it okay? That's what it means. Now, you could also try the other symmetries, that is whether it is symmetric about the y-axis or not, whether it is symmetric about the point or not. Right, so, so you'll find that it is not really symmetric about the y-axis, right? So, so this only symmetry which this function has is this. The other two you can try, right? Okay, it is good to try, okay, yeah. Now, since we know that it is symmetric about the polar axis, that really means that all the points which will be on the upper half can be reflected, right? So, so that gives us the possible values of theta between 0 and pi. You get an idea, right? So that really helps. So what we will do now is we'll just uh, find some points, rather calculate points um, from 0 to pi, right? So, so what we can have here is we'll calculate some points for theta uh, and we'll find what f of theta is, right? f of theta is 1 plus cos theta. To begin with, we can start with 0. Is it okay? Theta equals to 0. And then we can take uh, points like uh, uh, pi by 3. We could take uh, pi by 6. We could take pi by 4, pi by 3, and then pi by 2. This is pi by 2 for us. Uh, pi by 2. And then we can continue this side, which is uh, uh, then we have... Uh, Let's go by pi by 6, 1 pi by 6, 2 pi by 6, 3 pi by 6, 4 pi by 6, right? So, so likewise, we can get uh, uh, and then 5 pi by 6. So, if 4 pi by 6, I want to write, that's kind of confusing here. Anyway, we'll write 4 pi by 6, okay? And then we have pi by 4, 2 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4. And then we can have 5 pi by 6, right? And then the value at pi, okay? So, so we'll just squeeze it in, okay? So these are different values which we can calculate and then find out, correct? So we can use the calculator. The setting should be in radians, right? So cos of 0 is 1. You could actually quickly write down these values also using um, similar, I mean, your special triangles, right? So you can use calculator or special triangles. So let's make the special triangles uh, here. 
So we'll make one that will help us, kind of. Calculator will help us to give us decimal values. Is that okay? So both both are good options. So if this is pi by three, then we know this is one two and square root of three. And uh, for pi by four, it is square root of two one and one. I prefer to write in this fashion. Anyway, and you know, cos zero is one and cos pi by two. I mean, cos zero is one and cos pi by two is zero. So first, when theta is zero, this equation will be zero and we get one here, right? Now pi by six, that means we are looking from here, is half. Is that okay? Half. So it is one plus half. So what I will do from now onwards, I'll just use calculator. So we have one plus cos of, within brackets, pi by six. So that is pi divided by six, bracket close, equals two. So we have a number here, which is kind of complicated, We'll just put in decimals. Is it okay? So in decimals, we get 1.866. So I'll write this value as 1.86, for example, right? So now we'll do 1 plus cos of uh, pi by 4. So it is uh, pi divided by 4. That gives us a value which is in decimals 1.707. Now we'll do one plus cos pi by three. So pi divided by three bracket close equals to three over two, 1.5. So we get 1.5 here. Pi by two. So pi by two is uh, zero, you know, so we'll write one here. Okay, and four pi by six. So we have one plus cos of four times pi divide by 6 bracket close equal to so this is uh, decimal 0 0.5 3 pi by 4 so it is 1 plus cos of within brackets 3 pi by 4 so 3 times pi divide by 4 bracket close equals to decimal value 0 0.29 right 5 pi by 6, 1 plus cos of, within bracket, 5 times pi divided by 6 equals to, in decimals, uh, 0 0.133, okay. Now, it is uh, cos of pi, right? So, cos of pi you know, it's minus one, so let me write minus one plus one as zero. So we'll get this value as zero, is it okay? So that is how we are going to get these different values. Now, let us plot these values on this graph. So first one, for zero, we get one. So where will this point go? So that means the angle is zero, the value is one, so it is right there, is that okay? So that is the value for one plus cos theta. Uh, I think that value is wrong. I did wrong calculation. 1 plus 1, that should be 2, right? 1 plus 1, 2, right? So, cos of 0 is 1, so it should have been 2. Let me do, show you once again, okay? So, that's a mistake. So, it is, uh, I mean, sorry, it is 1 plus cos of 0, right? So, since 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 should be 2. So, this point should be actually a 2, not here. So, this point is 2 for us. Let me use a different ink. Okay. So, the first point which we get is right here at 2. Then, at pi by 6, so, so pi by 6, let me uh, kind of, uh, I mean, what I will do is, uh, this is pi by 4 for us, okay, pi by 4. So pi by 6, let us say this line represents, okay, let's draw pi by 6. Uh, let me make now rough sketch here, okay. So we'll have pi by 6 kind of like this, and then we'll have pi by 3 here. So, so that should work, right. Similarly, there will be, uh, this will be divided into three portions. So let me do that. So we make this. Is it okay? So we have kind of added the required rays which will give us all the required angles now okay so pi by 6 is 1.86 that is closer to 2 right so from here closer to 2 let's say this is 1.86 now we have 1.7 at pi by 4 
so slightly less okay and then 1.5 so midway kind of uh, here so midway maybe here okay and then 1 at pi by 2 so it's kind of here 4 pi by 6 is half so this is 1 this will be half okay and then uh, 3 pi by 4 point 0.2 so point 0.2 3 pi by 2 is kind of coming in inwards 5 pi by 6 is 0 0.33 so uh, oh this was here okay now 5 pi by 6 is 1 point point one three very close to zero okay and then finally at pi it is zero so we get this point so that is the kind of points which we get kind of approximate right so if you connect them we get the plot on the upper half of polar axis you get an idea right so so let me connect these points and we say well this is this is what we have so kind of let me just do it Is that okay? So that is what we get on the upper half. Now, since we found the symmetry of this, it is symmetric about the polar axis. That means all other points will kind of follow here, right? So, so you could do this the point, and this is a good point to take. So we'll take kind of kind of here, right? So anyway, so what we see here is that these points. Uh, so at one, we have this. This is at one. So these points could be plotted here. Reflect them on the polar axis. Reflect them on the polar axis. Starting from here, let's go one by one. Okay, so this, then we have on this axis slightly more than this, and then on this axis less than this. So we get a set of points here, right? So connecting them, we get our figure, which is kind of like this. Is it okay? So it looks like a hard shape right so it's a hard shape figure which is like horizontally placed and we call this as cardioid so it's called so so cardioid that's the name for this particular figure which is kind of hard shape so if you have a cosine function which is r equals to 1 plus cos theta we'll get a shape kind of like this you will see since these two coefficients i mean one and one are same in that case this is a point which is uh, i mean kind of here right if you have a value coefficient of cos greater than one right in that case you will notice that these negative values could have been moved out right so so you could have got some overlapping here so those those are the things which we'll consider in the next video if this value is higher in that case it will not be at the origin kind of it will be it will be kind of like this right so there would be variation depending on the value of one and and uh, this what i'm trying to say here is that if i have an equation which is a equals to r equals to a plus b cos theta then depending on the values of a and b this graph will slightly change it could have an overlap it could be without overlap and it could be like this so in another video we will we will check what happens to this graph when i have these values which are uh, kind of different right so in this case we took same both one right so we'll see what happens to the graph when the value changes right what happens to the graph you should also explore uh, what happens for r equals to one plus sine theta right now sine theta is kind of more dependent on y so this graph will be oriented kind of like this right maybe like this is it okay so hard shape in vertical so that could be the graph which you may get for r equals to one plus sine theta i like you to explore on this right so that let this be your exercise so explore steps involved will be same first find the symmetry once you find the symmetry then decide which points should you take right and based on that plot the points connect use the symmetry to connect the other half and get your solution i'm anil kumar and i hope these basic steps help you to understand the concept we'll move further with few more examples that should give you a good grasp on this subject 
I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.